Good morning, Ms. Likando, and thank you very much for joining us this morning. Good morning to you, Elago. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Please explain to us what the situation on the ground is at present. Thank you very much. Um, in the Kavango East now, the situation at the moment is that um, we are seeing a reduction in the number of cases across all our three districts, as you mentioned, Rundu, Nyangana, and Andara. Mm -hmm. Now, the last reported statistics, ma'am, recorded that since January, that which were recorded since January, that the cases stood at 709 and four deaths. Is this still the case at present? Thank you. Uh, our cases have gone up a bit. So we currently stand at 787 cases. But fortunately for the death reported, we still remain at four. Oh, all right. We are glad to hear that there weren't any more deaths reported after the statistics presented in January. Now, which areas are of concern at the moment and what interventions have been taken to mitigate this? Thank you. Um, the areas of concern has been Andara district. It has shown more cases compared to the other two districts. So uh, when we zoomed into our cases, we realized that there are some areas or villages that have reported more cases as compared to others. Just to make mention of a few uh, areas like Omega, Shadikongoro, uh, Shadikwera, Shamarao, those are the areas, some of them. So what we have done in terms of intervention is that we are doing active case detection or contact tracing, as some people know it. So we have also coupled it with mass testing and mass treatment if we happen to test someone positive. And also, um, last week, uh, we just ended our three weeks uh, lavisiding program, which is what we call a treatment of water bodies. This is just to reduce um, the mosquito population at the aquatic stage. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, we have coupled this with distribution of nets. Uh, so the nets that we have are of a limited supply. We only got them from a global fund. So what we have done is that uh, when we go out and follow the cases, we also carry nets and also distribute. And also what we have done, uh, what we are doing currently is that during our ACD, we also do um, active case detection. With active case detection, uh, we, uh, we also do environmental assessment. So we go around the area of the house and also look for potential breeding sites. Mm. So uh, sometimes we find uh, old tires or old cans around the houses, which might have collected water during the rain season. Mm. So this also serves as potential breeding sites. Mm. Thank you. All right. We understand that the ministry has also um, under took a spraying exercise. So please explain to us what the success of this has been and how many houses so far have been fumigated? Um, the IRS, we call it indoor residual spraying, okay. which we are calling fumigation. So um, our coverage for last year's season has been 46%. So as compared to our target, which is supposed to be 85%, this is a bit below. But uh, this is attributed to, uh, to a reason that uh, we couldn't uh, procure enough uh, adequate insecticide as a ministry or as a government due to the COVID regulations that were employed globally. Mm. But however, with this 46%, we have managed to cover uh, over 91,000 structures. So structures in this case will be, uh, let me say, a room, so to say. Mm. That's how we calculate our coverage. Thank you. Thank you very much for that detailed explanation. Now, there sometimes is uh, challenges experienced by the ministry when conducting the residual, pro residual procedural spraying. And the, some of the challenges that we've understood is that um, some community members are not welcome to opening um, members or the, the members that are supposed to be conducting the spraying. Is this still the case? Thank you. Um, we have seen an improvement in terms of community involvement and participation. I would also like to make mention of the support uh, from our Honorable Governor Bonifacio Duakdumo and the, uh, the Regional Council. We've also had support from our village headmen in terms of advocacy and also mobilization there. And then uh, we've also had support from stakeholders like Flame and um, Elsin Malaria. 
So our community involvement and participation has improved. However, we still have people that are not cooperating with our teams. Uh, so uh, this is still a challenge, but it has improved. Mm. Thank you. Now, Ms. Likando, just for interest's sake, how long does the spray or the, the, the chemical last in homes? Okay, the chemical that we are using now is called Sumi Shield, mm -hmm. and the efficacy lasts for a period of six months. Mm -hmm. When we look at it from a statistic point of view, in terms of the nets that you've explained that have been distributed by the ministry, um, how many have the how many have the ministry distributed so far? Okay, um, in terms of nets, as I mentioned earlier, that we are only distributing nets. Uh, when we are doing active case detection or following up the cases. So, so far we have distributed a total of 642 nets, which have protected about 1,700 people. Mm -hmm. um, please just take us through the malaria prevention program again. Um, we understand that it consists of three phases. Mm -hmm. Okay, the malaria prevention program is an integrated program, meaning we have different types of methods. We have what we call water body treatment, or we call it labiciding. We also have what we call mass testing and active case detection, where we follow up cases. And then finally, we have the actual indoor residual spraying, where we spray the houses. Mm. Thank you. All right, ma'am. Winter, now that we've, we've, we've crossed over into the winter season, winter is considered a season for low ma malaria cases and transmissions. Is that really the case? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Definitely the cases are already going up. So uh, during winter, cases go down. As expected, they are already going up. Mm -hmm. So you are right. All right. In conclusion, ma'am, um, please share with us your final remarks. Uh, thank you so much. In conclusion, I would just love to urge our communities to participate and in, be involved in this uh, program of malaria control. Because as a ministry alone, we cannot do anything without our communities being involved. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to the communities, especially the headmen that have been volunteering to mobilize their own community. This has really, really helped us a lot as a ministry and as a government. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you very much for making our time to speak to us today. Thank you. Well, that was Aneti Likando, who is the Chief Environmental Health Practitioner in the Ministry of Health and Social Services, talking to us about the malaria situation in the Kavango East region.